The Philippines slap in the face. Uh, I want to cover this today because it's relevant to somebody today. Um, everything was going fine. You know, he's got his house, got his girlfriend, got everything settled. Loving the Philippines, experiencing the stuff around him. And then there was brownout this morning. Brownout's a power cut. Um, first thing you get with a power cut is it's just silent. And then you get that bit where the temperature starts rising because most buildings in the Philippines are concrete structures as such they're poor for airflow so it's getting hot and sticky kids are getting irritable etc etc so you think you know what we go in the car we go out in the car car's got air con you go out mind your own business dogs running in front of you people wandering away because it's all total darkness and stuff you think oh for goodness sake and then somebody takes some wrong medication next thing is you're in a medical emergency so, <coughs> this is what I call the Philippines slap in the face. The fact that you've got to the Philippines, met the woman of your dreams, or guy of the dreams, or whatever, or just happily single, enjoying the travel experience, and then something happens. But it just suddenly, just bang, slap in the face, and it all sort of spirals out of control. Because, like this medical emergency, the hospital was not a good hospital. The facilities were not good. The place was not clean. At the same time, you're there going, what, what's going on? This is why preparation is a major thing. It, it's, it's all about being prepared for these things happening. You can't protect yourself against everything. I'll be honest with you, you cannot. If you've got a neighbor that just suddenly starts burning rubbish next door, they're very difficult to deal with because they go, well, this is my guard, doing what I would like. I think this will start changing with Duterte, but I'm talking from long-term experience, dealing with these people that are sometimes very awkward to deal with um, can be quite difficult. It's better to actually have other people approach them diplomatically and manipulate things a little bit than actually confront and say, why the hell are you burning all that in your garden, all these fumes, blah, 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 because they just go, oh, up yours and mind your own business because you've confronted them and they go, oh, disliked it and now they're putting their face on to sort of say, this is my land, blah, blah, blah. Childish, I know, but it, you've got these things that do go on in the Philippines quite a lot. So the whole point is, is you sit there and you prepare things. Like with the power going off, get yourself a small generator. It doesn't have to be a big generator. Um, we have a small one. People say, oh, it's, it's crap because it's noisy, it's cheap, it's blah, blah, blah. It's noisy, it's cheap. The main word there is cheap. Does it do what it needs to do? Yes. Was it expensive? No. So if it breaks in five years' time, am I bothered? Answer is no. Does it need a lot of maintenance? No, because it's cheap. Um, could I get somebody to actually rebuild it if I wanted to? Yeah, Philippines has people that do that. Um, but also, you think about me kickstart. I don't start this stuff. I have other people do that for me. That's about life in the Philippines. Other people will do all the hard work for you. You just have to get the equipment for them. Um, but a small generator, the, these little Chinese ones, um, it can power a laptop, it can power two electric fans, it can power a some fairy lights, so you've got some, some lights in the house if it's dark, and if you have a smart bro um, antenna, or internet, it will actually power the internet as well, so you're not switched off to the world. Um, I recommend getting a long extension cable, so it's as far away from you as possible. <laughs> But at the same time, I've never had any neighbours complain about the noise. If anything, they appreciate the fact that we've got generating and go, can you charge my mobile phone for me, please? Um, so, yeah, you, first thing somebody's going to ask me is, yeah, what if the power's off? Why have you still got internet? Because a transponder's normally in the next town or on the top of the hill or whatever. It's, it's normally not an entire island out. It's, it's normally just a small area. So if you can reach the transponder, you're fine and then normally if that transponder's out you've got electric anyway because it's never both of you it's normally one or the other so don't worry about it um, but yeah you just prepare yourself and like I said Philippines is like that because it, you get your guard down because you're sat there relaxing not minding your own business nobody's bugging you you're not bugging anybody else then something just happens uh, and it just spirals out of control quite quickly I was saying with the medical stuff, that, that can be a major disaster sometimes because it goes from, okay, let's get an ambulance, but there is no ambulance on this island. 
Well, what do you normally do? Oh, we go to another island. When's the next ferry? Tomorrow. Sometimes that stuff happens. It may sound extreme, but it does. That's why um, a friend of mine had it. We he was on Bahol actually. Um, a child died next to him in a hospital bed because um, he he was dehydrated. He doesn't feel well. Been in the hospital. His child died next to him. He thought, I ain't stopping here any longer. Got got a um, tricycad down to the ferry. Got on the ferry. Uh, I think there was a yeah. Got on the ferry. The other end of the ferry, there was an ambulance waiting to take him to a proper hospital in Cebu City, um, which sorted him out because the hospital he was in told him not to drink any water. I've never had any hospital tell me not to drink fluids, um, but unless they're actually doing surgery or something. But they, they told him not to drink. So by the time he got there, he'd been dehydrated for, I think, about 12 hours because he hadn't been drinking. He, and he eventually found he had an amoeba inside him. Um, but the whole point was that hospital, if he'd stayed there, may have been a um, nail in the coffin, literally, if they'd let, they left him to dehydrate. Um, so, yeah, think for yourself. Do not trust people the way we often do in the West. Because they're a doctor or whatever, don't always trust them. Um, it doesn't mean they're a good doctor. It doesn't mean they're a great doctor. If they're a great doctor or whatever, they would be in one of the main hospitals. When you start getting more and more provincial, some of those people I would say are questionable. In my opinion. Thanks for watching.